If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to add a visual script to an object in Unity, specifically a visual script to the player object. Then we can add functionality into that script. First, to check what version of visual scripting you have, you can go to the window tab and select the package manager. Here in the package manager, you can inspect different packages. For example, the visual scripting package included by default with Unity as of 2021. We are using 1.7.7 as the visual scripting version in this course. Next up, now that we know what version of visual scripting we have, let's add a new visual script graph to an object. So I'm going to select my player and you can double click on it if you want to zoom in on it. Then in our inspector, we're going to add a component to our object. This component is a script machine. So hit enter and this will add a script machine component to your player object. Here we can see we have several properties, the source, embed or graph, as well as the graph if there is one selected. So if you have embed, it means you're embedding a script into this object. This makes the script less reusable, so we recommend graph so you can reuse the graph. Next, you can select a script graph where you actually have your functionality and you can attach it to this object. So we don't actually have a graph yet. We're going to create a new graph. So hit the new button. Then you'll be prompted to select elements. For example, what do you want as the name of your graph? We will call this our player graph. Hit enter to save. And you'll notice now in your script machine, you have a graph property with a value now that says player. And the type is script graph asset. You can click, click edit graph. This will open up the visual scripting editor. So let's wait a moment for the visual scripting editor to open. Here we can write a simple script for now just to test out that the graph actually works. So here a new window will open with a graph. To move around the graph, you can click and hold your mouse to move left and right or scroll to move up and down. By default, we have two events in our graph. We have on start and on update. We, we can remove a node like on update just by hitting the delete key if you select it. So click on the node and then you can hit delete to delete it. As well, let's add some simple functionality to our graph just to check that it actually can run functionality. So when the game begins on start, I'm going to log a message to the console. This is just logging out a message to ourselves to check that we reach a point in our game functionality. So I'm going to drag. So you just click and drag off a node from this executable pin. If you want to deselect this drag pin wire, just right click. So you can click and hold to drag off a pin, right click to deselect. You can click, you don't even have to hold, you can just click once and then you can just move your mouse away and you'll have this option to create a wire. These wires, they select the flow of execution. What do you want to happen after? So it's like a flow chart. Then I'm going to click once in order to drop a new node. The node that I want to drop is the log, specifically debug log message. So I want to use that node type to create a new node. This will log a message to the Unity console. So click on that option and this will create a new node in your graph. This is a function that will let us log a message. So this function is pre-built by Unity. You'll notice we have two input nodes, the executable, so what is the flow of execution, what is the order of execution. So that means first we have on start, then we go to debug log, and only if this event actually occurs. We also have a second input pin called message. This is a data pin, and it's telling us that it needs some data to do its job. In this case, we need to 
give data or information about what message do we actually want to log. So I'm going to drag off a node or drag off a wire. So just click and then move your mouse. I'm going to drag off a wire from the input pin and click on the graph to create a new pin, which will be a string literal. A string literal means a string or a piece of text that I'm just going to type out inside of the node literally. So I'm going to type out game started. Right, so this means when the game begins, I'm going to use the log function to log out the message game started. We can now test this functionality out to make sure that it actually works. So I'm going to close my script graph, which will take me back to my editor, my regular scene editor. Then I'm going to press the play button to start the game. Then I can go to the console in the bottom of my editor and I can see game started has been logged out. Because this is logged out, this tells me that the log function is working as I expected. So my script is indeed working. Every time I hit play, this is going to log the message that I wanted to via the script graph. If the player does not have a script machine on it, if you deselect that component and you press play again, then you'll notice the console will not log anything because we deselected that component. So the component must actually be added to a player if you want to see the component work. So if you want to see that function log be called, then you have to have that graph attached to some game object, such as the player in this case. So that is how you can attach a visual script to an object in Unity. Coming up next, we're going to use our visual script and we're going to make it more complex in order to enable player input controls. So our players can actually use input like their keyboard to move the sphere or the player object around. So we're going to build out a bigger visual script in the next lecture. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to enable player controls with Unity Visual Scripting. So we're going to reopen our player's visual script by clicking on the player object and then in the inspector, go to the component of the script machine and click the button edit graph. This will launch open the script graph. Here in our script graph, we're going to create a new node. So we'll right click anywhere on the graph and I'm going to search for on update. This is an event node and I'll hit enter. We are going to use this node because it fires on update, which means it's going to fire or run every frame of the game. And typically games run at 30 frames per second. So every frame of the game, we are going to enable input to change the position of our player. So I'm going to drag off a node and the node that I'm going to run on every frame is set position. So we're going to set the position of our object. This is going to be of the type transform, which means a space position, a position in the world. Hit enter and this will give you a new node you can see we have three input pins, the executable pin, as well as a transform object. This refers to which object do you want to change the position of. If you use this, it means you're referring to whatever this graph is attached to currently. Then you have another input pin, and that is a transform. And this is a series of three values, X, Y, and Z. So this refers to what is the position that you want to use for this object. So that is the node that we are putting to use. So how do we set the position? Well, to set the position, I'm going to get the horizontal axis, so moving left and right, and I'm going to adjust the previous position. So I'm going to just enable moving left and right in our game to start off, and then we can add more complex controls later. So I'm going to right click in the graph and search for get axis 
under the input type. This will return the value of the virtual axis identified by the axis name. So what is our axis name? Well, to find out, we have to go to our project settings. So I'm going to go into edit and then select project settings. And here we have our project settings window open. I'm going to look for the input manager under these options. Under input manager, we have an axes option that we can expand. And we have different axes, the most common one being horizontal, moving left and right. So the name of this axis is horizontal. And we can see if we use our left arrow key or our right arrow key, then we can move either to the left or to the right, we can move negatively or positively on the horizontal axis, meaning the x-axis. We can also see the axis right there selected, it's the x-axis, so that's how we know. Similarly, we have the vertical axis, which is down and up for moving forward and back. All right, so we're using the horizontal axis to start off. So here, I have get axis, the axis name, I'm going to type in horizontal. So I want to get the axis that has the name horizontal for moving left and right. Then I'm going to create a vector 3 using that axis on the x value. So here I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a node. This is create vector 3. So I want to add a new create vector 3 node. But I need to take in some input here as to the vector 3 that I want to create. So instead of just selecting the default create vector 3, I want to select the one that enables me to put in an x, a y, and a z value instead of just the one that doesn't let me put one in. So this way I can specify that I want to use my axis for the x value. This means that if the player uses the left or right arrow keys, I'll get the value that they have adjusted and I'll use it for the x axis. The y and the z should be 1, so they just stay whatever they were previously. We're going to take that vector and we're going to multiply it by a speed. So I'm going to add another node called multiply. This is a mathematical operator of multiplication. I want to be able to multiply three vectors together, so make sure you specify in math vector 3. I'm going to multiply my vector that I just created using the x-axis. I'm going to multiply it by my speed, which I will set to 0 0.01 on the x, 0 on the y, and then 0 0.01 on the z. Because I don't want to move up and down, I just want to move left and right and forward and back, which are x and z. The result of this, I'm going to add to my previous position. So I'm going to add a new node using the add operator specifically to add vector 3s. And here I'm going to select that value I used to change my position based on input, as well as get position of the transform type and this is going to return the position of this object meaning the player object so we're going to take the previous position and just add our change and we'll take the results and send it to setting the position of this object so here to set the position of this object, the player, we add two values, the previous position as well as the change in position, which is the horizontal axis change on the x multiplied by the speed. Because whenever the player uses the left or right arrow keys, they're changing the value on the horizontal axis. So we're going to grab that just on the x. The y and z can just be 1 because we won't allow movement to be changed on Y or Z, only on X to move left and right. We'll take that and we'll multiply it by a speed so you can adjust it to be able to move faster or slower depending on how much control you want to give the player. So we'll take that change in the position as well as the previous position. We add the two to get our new position which we set. So that is how we can adjust the player's controls. 
So I'm going to close my script graph and I'm going to hit play in my Unity editor. Now, look at that, I can move to the left. If I restart the game, I can also move to the right. So now with my new controls, I can move right and left with my keyboard. If I use the left and right arrow keys or the A and D arrow keys. We can also increase the scale of our platform just to give ourselves more time to test this out. So I'm going to just drag that platform down and drag the target down as well. You can zoom in on the target by double clicking on it in the hierarchy. And let's just drag it down to make sure it touches our platform and it's not just hovering in the air. Then we can press play and now we can move our player until we touch the target and we fall off. All right, so this verifies that we are able to move left and right. So we enabled player controls via visual scripting. Awesome, that does it for this lecture. Coming up next for our project, we're going to learn how we can handle player death and level restart. So we can handle if the player touches the target, what should we do? Should we move to the next level? If the player falls off of the plane, however, for example, if the plane is very small, then it might be easier for them to fall off. Well, in, if they do fall off, then how, what should we do then? Should we restart the level? Or should we restart the whole game, go back to level zero? What should we do? So we're going to work on more functionality with visual scripting coming up in the next lecture. One note before we go, if you make any changes, you have to exit your play mode. So if you want to make a change to the game, you have to do so when you're outside of play mode, when you're in just stop mode. If I make a change when I am in play mode, that change is temporary. For example, if I move my main camera right now, if I hit stop, it's going to reset everything. So if you make a change in play mode, it is a temporary change. If you want to make a permanent change, you have to make the change when you are outside of play mode. Well, that does it for this lecture. Join me in the next section. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.